Okay, um, I've boogered this drawing somehow. I can see that uh, some of my parts I've moved, I and mean, that's off an eighth of an inch or so, this end panel. So everything was supposed to be datoed in and clean. So I'm going to just quickly show you how, um, how to get a job from SketchUp into vCarve and then go to the machine. Do I want to save the changes? I am, and I'll just have to clean it up later. Uh, so I'm not sure where to start, so let's just do a rectangle. I'm going to drop it in here at the index corner. I'm going to say it's uh, 48.96. I'm typing those values in. You'll see them come in down here. Um, 48,96, enter. I'm going to do P for push, pull, pull it up, and do 0.75, and that's the thickness of my material. And so I have a part there, a piece there. Now, I want to keep this thing all together, so I'm going to double-click on it, click, click, and it selects the whole thing, hit the right button, and make it a component, and I'll call it a full sheet. You don't have to name them, but you might as well. Uh, and then I'm just going to do a couple different operations so you can see how it works. I'm going to do a rectangle. I'm going to double-click on this to get in it. You see it highlight the box because what I want to do is associate it with this piece, not with another piece, or I'm not going to build another piece coming off of this. So I'm going to do an R, and I'm just going to do a rectangle that is something like this. I let go of the mouse, and then I type in 0.75, comma, 48, enter, and it's the wrong way. So I do, without changing anything, I do 48, comma, 0.75. 7.5, and that's the way I wanted it to be. And it's now that's a, that's a drawing that's on top of that top surface. And I'm going to make this a dado. So I'm going to double click on inside there, do P, P for push pull, and I'm going to push down 0.25. So I've got a dado in there. I'm going to come all the way out, and if we look at this thing, it's a panel with the dado. So we get the idea. Um, now I can do another one. I can do a rectangle because we had some intersecting, and this would be 24, comma, uh, 0.75, push-pull, double, just double, well, I could double-click on it, but it went up, so I'm going to do Control-Z to bring it back down, highlight it, and drag it down. What's happening? Okay, Control-Z. Okay, uh, so that took it away. I'm going to redo the rectangle. P for push-pull. Drop it down. Oh, I see what it is. I'm not on that component yet. That's just a freestanding piece. Control-Z, Control-Z, it's gone. Double-click on it. That gets me into the, comp the component. There's plenty of SketchUp videos by people that teach better than I do. So I'm going to do R for rectangle. I'm going to come this way, 24,0.75, enter. And then I'm going to... P for push-pull, and I'm going to drop that down, 0.25, enter. And I'm going to do this one the same thing, this one the same thing, this one the same thing, and this one the same thing. So now we have an intersecting point of, like we have for the webbing. Now, well, one of the things that VCarve does beautifully is to take something, and I'm going to do a circle, uh, the radius, if I look down the bottom right hand corner, is 0.375. It doesn't matter what it is, so that's a three quarter inch. I'll do, I'll do another one, and I'll do it uh, 0.25. Doesn't matter. Push pull. I'm gonna drop that down 0.25. Whatever. And this one, I'm gonna go all the way through. I'm gonna push it down to here, and it cuts all the way through. Okay. I'll do the same thing with this one. These are like the indexed threads on the uh, the insert. I'm sorry, the insert threads on the pre previous drawing. Now these were on top of the intersection points of the webbing, uh, so that I could put an insert thread in there and then drop in indexing jigs if I need to. May not need to. It just gives you another option. So I'm gonna get out of that component, and I don't know why it's this color. What's going on there? There's something odd with this longer one, but I'm not going to worry about it. I'm going to save it. <laughs> File, save. I'm just going to call this EJS under my documents. And then I'm going to go into SketchUp. Uh, I'm sorry, into vCarve. And we'll say File, New. If you want to save changes, this is a 3D piece I was going to cut. 
And this is going to be 4896. I think I'm sorry, I'm not paying attention. 48 tab 96 tab 0.75 enter. And then I want to open up a drawing. And and this is um, so there's EJS SketchUp. And this is what SketchUp does. It's great. And um, take circles and, and make them circles. In in SketchUp, there are a series of, of dots around in a circular pattern with straight lines between them. And so it would actually machine that. And so this way it'll fix the SketchUp stuff into real vector stuff. So just let it do it automatically. These are the default settings. And I'll tell it OK. And there we have it. Um, basically, at this point, I can go over. That's that's the geometry sucked right in. I don't have to do anything. I can make sure it's centered on the material. I'll highlight the whole thing. So it's highlighted what it just brought in, center it, and that fixed it onto the material properly. And that's it. I'm ready to go in and machine it. So I would say I want to do a pocket with a quarter inch depth of cut with a quarter inch tool, whatever, and I want to select what geometry I want to use. I want to use this. Um, and then we have issues because it's selecting everything, so I need to ungroup things. I hit the right button to ungroup the objects back to the original layers. And now I should be able to just grab that and hold down the shift key and If I undo that, so I'm touching these lines and deleting them, and that way this is all just one pocket now. So I cleaned it up a little bit, and I'll say, okay, I'm going to just use a quarter inch tool. It's going to go one one pass. I'm going to say pocket dados. I like to name the the uh, tooling operations a little better. Tell it to calculate it. Uh, it'll preview it. I'll reset the preview, preview all, and there's the machining on it. I'll do the same thing with the um, Circular holes, uh, circular operations. Um, you have a 3D view here, and you also have a 2D view. So I grab my geometry in the 2D view, and then determine how I want to do the cutting. I could do this and do a, a, a profile cut on the inside, or I could do a pocket. It just depends on how you want to do it. So I'm going to do a profile cut. I'm going to come down the thickness of the material, T plus 0 0.020 equals... Uh, so I'm doing the thickness of the material plus 20 thousandths into the spoil board. Uh, I will use the same end middle. I'll edit the number of passes. I don't want it to do three. I'll have it to just do two. I could do a spiral in to input. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways, and I'm not going to get into the machining of it here. Uh, and I want that to be on the inside of that geometry. And I'll tell it to do profile circles. And calculate it. It warns us that it's going to cut through. We tell it OK. And if I zoom in... It shows me my operations there. Now, what I always do is you want to go and look at it. Uh, that's the vector, and that's the inside. That's showing that we are inside the, the vector that we had, drip, had drawn. That's very important. I often turn this on here um, so that I can see the tool pathing. So uh, I know that I'm on the inside versus the outside. So this bigger one's going to leave a little bit of a, of a, of a circle here. Uh, and then when I cut all the way through, that's going to come loose. That's going to get sucked up in the vacuum. Or not. So I could pocket this out instead so I don't have something that's a little nub um, that rattling around. Depends on how you want to do it. It doesn't matter. If I want to do pocketing, I'd use this operation on the same vector, and it'll just dust the entire thing. It's your call. At that point, we're ready to send this out to the machine. I'll look at it. Uh, one of the questions that I was just answering this evening on the phone, preview all, zip, zip, we're done. Um, if I can flip that over, I'll see my holes. Um, was how do we determine the time? So if I want to look just at, if a guy wants to do time studies and say how much time he's doing, if he's just doing a dado type construction for cabinet parts versus um, a, a butt construction or uh, some knockdown hardware, it doesn't matter. You can pick your different operations and look at the clock. And this is approximate. This isn't all right. Uh, but so that's showing three minutes for the dados. And... Uh, 29 seconds for for that, but you can start tweaking this based on your cutting speeds. If you 
print out, there's a worksheet that you can print out with this on a job sheet and keep track of it. And it'll tell you what it approximated and what the scale factor was. And so then you can say, nope, it was a little faster than that. It, it, it rather than take me a total of three minutes and 44 seconds, or you can break it down by individual operations. If it, took me, if it takes me less than that, I need to go play with these values up or down to get the get it to come out to the size, the time that you want it to be. So at that point, we're done, and I would save the job, and this is the same tool, so I'd save the tool path. I'll just drop it wherever this was. So I'll just call it EJS uh, G R R B L output. Uh, my machine is not on right now, so I can't send it to it, but typically you would open up FileZilla or whatever file transfer program you have. This would be connected to the machine. I would go down to uh, my documents. We'll just move up to uh, documents. and oh, There's a file. I would grab it. I'm not going to install the new version right now. Just drag it over here, release it and it'd be at the machine by the time I can get up out of my chair. Um, so that's how simple it is to bring in something to VCarve. Um, and that could be from SketchUp. It could be some STL files. It could be other 3D files. It doesn't really matter. They, there's all kinds of different ways to bring in certain CAD files. Um, assign tool pathing and... There's some cabinet software out there that uh, when it outputs it, it's going to have the dados in certain layers and the circles in certain layers, and you can automatically assign particular layers to a certain tool operation, and it comes in and, and it's got the operations already associated with it, so it's, it's very powerful. Um, but that's how we do a SketchUp to, VCar to VCarve import. Be sure to call me if you have any questions. That's Eric Schiller at Yeti Tools Southeast. If you're in the United States, uh, give me a shout at 205-871-6618.